if you want to feed slaves or prisoners or the lower class and keep their belly full and keep them from starving to death and keep them relatively happy, then a plant-based diet will do that just fine. If, however, you would like to be as optimal as you can possibly be approaching a superhuman and almost more importantly, if you'd like to grow superhuman babies, then you have to include animal-based foods in your diet. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about choline, specifically, where it's found, what it does, why you want it, and why you just can't get it on a plant-based diet. I think this video is gonna ruffle a few feathers, so stick around for the truth. Now, if you've never heard of choline and don't know much about it or what it does, don't be surprised. It seems that the plant-based nutrition authorities teaching us how to eat, teaching, don't really talk about it much. And I think once you've finished watching this video to the end, you're gonna understand why. First, I want to start with the conclusion of an article that was published in Nutrition Reviews back in 2009. Their conclusion was there is an immediate need to increase awareness among health professionals and consumers, that's you, of choline as an essential but currently suboptimal nutrient and further to highlight the critical role it plays throughout life, especially for pregnant and breastfeeding moms. New analysis of the NHANES data indicates that for the majority of the population, choline consumption is far below current dietary recommendations. Now, you would think after a conclusion in a paper published in a reputable journal like that, people would be talking about choline all over the place. There'd be new research being done about it. We'd be looking into this issue further. But sadly, all you've heard since 2009 is basically the crickets chirping and nobody talking about choline as an essential nutrient for forming and maintaining nerves, for building human brains and optimizing them. What's that about? The symptoms of a choline deficiency can be very vague and non-descriptive. Uh, so they include fatigue, memory loss, cognitive decline, aka dementia, learning disabilities in children of all ages, muscle aches, nerve damage, and the failure to actually manufacture optimal neurons, and mood changes and mood disorders. Yeah, mental illnesses. All this can come from not getting enough choline in your diet. The human body can make choline. There's no doubt about that. We know the pathway that it happens on. But the problem is, is that we can't make enough choline. And this is well documented in the literature especially people who need lots of choline. They just can't make enough for optimal body function and for the production of new bodies, i.e. pregnancy and breastfeeding, in order to build and maintain a growing human brain. Here's a list of the uh, what I consider to be the daily minimal intake of choline for optimal function for different age groups, for different genders, and for different... Uh, periods of life. And so you can see that the infants and babies need, I'd say at least 150 milligrams a day. Children need up at least 250 milligrams a day. Teens need at least 375 milligrams a day. Women above age 14 need 550 milligrams a day. Men above 14 need the same amount. Pregnant women need at least 550 milligrams in order to for their body to do all the jobs of growing a little human in their oven that, that needs to be done. And then women who are breastfeeding, again, need at least 550 milligrams a day in order to give their baby the nutrition it needs to grow its developing brain, its quickly developing brain, and all of the nerves attached to that brain. According to the USDA Food Data Central website, these are the foods that are richest in choline. And not only are they the richest, they have the most bioavailable and bioabsorbable forms of choline that you can get in your proper human diet. Egg yolk, beef kidney, fish roe, yes, that's fish eggs, 
beef brain, pork chitterlings, beef liver, chicken liver, codfish, goose egg, duck egg, quail egg. So basically any form of liver, any form of organ meat, and any egg is going to be an amazing source of highly absorbable choline. And I know, I know you're saying, ooh, beef kidney, that's gross. Let's talk about that for a second. So the concept that organ meats, that offal, that eating brains, that that's gross or nasty, that's basically a social construct. Some people would even call it social programming. There seems to be some group of people who really, really want you to believe that eating organ meats is gross and that it's nasty and it's maybe dangerous. Maybe they store toxins. Maybe they're full of infectious bacteria. It's almost as if they don't want you to eat the organ meat. Uh, we know that by from looking at cookbooks back in the, the 1700s and the 1800s, each and every cookbook that was published back then are full of recipes with organ meat, with the tripe from the stomach, with the liver, with the brain, with the kidney, with all this stuff. And they, I mean, there are multiple recipes in these cookbooks it can't be that bad because these people went out of their way to include organ meat in their diet. I'll bet there's a reason that they did that because they were trying to, to grow the tallest, healthiest, most intelligent and resilient humans that they could grow. That was their whole goal back then, not to, to you know do something that's politically correct or to not offend anybody. They just wanted to eat the absolute best foods contained in a proper human diet. Now, here's a list of foods all from the same website, which I included a link to in the, re in the show notes down below, because I'm sure there's a lot of plant-based fanatics out there who won't believe me. They'll be like, that's not true. No, I, I read an article that said there were lots of choline-rich plant foods. Well, here are the most choline-rich plant foods on the planet. And you can see from the numbers, and I did the, the animal-based foods and the plant-based foods, we're talking about a 100 gram serving, which is about three and a half ounces. Uh, you're, you can see that the plant-based foods are anywhere from 60% to 90% lower in choline than the richest choline animal-based foods. And not only do they have a substantially lower level of choline in the plant-based foods, but also they're much harder to absorb. They're locked up in all these phytochemicals that prevent human digestive systems from absorbing the choline. And so most of it is just passed through and excreted in your waste and you don't get any of the benefit from the choline whatsoever. So let me encourage you to stop believing the plant-based propaganda that you see every single day from the corporate media if you are having any trouble with your brain or your nerves, and this runs the gamut from early dementia to mental health disorders, or if you're trying to grow a new human brain by being pregnant or feeding that growing human brain by breastfeeding, you absolutely need to get over the programming that, or, that organ meats are gross and bad and start incorporating them into your diet. All three of these cookbooks I showed you the cover of are available on Amazon and you can actually go by these recipes that were uh, published 200 years ago and you can make delicious choline rich meals for both you and your family regardless of your family's age. Getting optimal levels of choline in your daily diet is absolutely vital for the optimal function of your eyes, the retina of your eye, of brain function, of fatting, fighting fatty liver disease, of cell membrane signaling, of making neurotransmitters. Yeah, actually making the neurotransmitters that your brain uses. It, choline is vital for lipid transport port within your, your blood. It's absolutely needed for methyl group metabolism, and it probably prevents cancer, and it probably most likely prevents dementia. So you, you've got to figure out a way to get enough choline in your diet. Taking a supplement is probably not going to do it. If, if you're going to take any kind of supplement to try to get your choline, then I would recommend a, a desiccated organ supplement like ancestral supplements makes. 
that is full of dehydrated organ meat, that's probably a decent way to get choline. But if you just buy a choline supplement at the health food store, you're probably not gonna be able to absorb much of that choline whatsoever. There are millions of people out there who have no idea what choline is, why it's so uh, valuable to human function and to making new humans. Please consider sharing this video, especially if you know someone who is having these symptoms or who fits into one of these categories. If you'd like to join me in my fight to help people rediscover what a proper human diet actually is, please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com. It's a super quick sign up and you can throw a buck or two my way so that I have more time and more resources to do the research needed to help bring you the truth. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.